Hey, Destiny Church. Um, just uh, welcome again to our little broadcast thing that we're doing during this uh, season of um, enforced uh, isolation. <laughs> uh, so we just want to uh, talk to you and encourage you and bless you uh, in the things of God. Uh, we've been, again, talking about just gates and a shelter and a refuge, and so we build the gates. God is the walls uh, of salvation, deliverance, and healing, and protection in our lives. But we co-labor co with Him, we, we work with Him, we abide in Him, and He abides in us. And it's this wonderful connection that we have. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, uh, chapter 5, I should say, verses 16 to 18, it says that we rejoice always, we pray without ceasing, and we uh, give thanks in everything, or in everything we give thanks unto God. And so um, uh, the praying without ceasing is this learning to actually be in this wonderful connection with God. It's not like, oh, I'm praying, you know, out loud because that's not sustained. You can't do that. And you, you got to go to work. You got to go uh, um, to do different things. If you can, keep going to work during this season. But um, it's learning to just keep that connection in your spirit, man. I talked about the three things that we are made up of, of body, soul, and spirit. And so most of us live mainly by our, by our flesh, by our man, by our body. And then we also live a lot of our times by our, um, uh, by our soul, our emotions, and our feelings. Um, and also our thinking and our intellect so and our will. So we actually live most of our lives by that, where God really wants us to be uh, uh, consciously aware that there's another component here, and, and that's, uh, that's our spirit man. Uh, we, we think that we are a body, and we're just flesh, and we have a spiritual experience. But let me just say this in reverse. That we are actually first and foremost spiritual beings with a body. The only reason why we have a body is to house our spirit. In the very beginning, God created us. And when he created us, he made us out of the, 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 the dust of the earth. And he, he put us together. He shaped us and formed us. But then that was just to house what he breathed into us, the breath of life. And so when he did that, he put into us a soul. He put into us his spirit. We were made alive because of that. When you and I become born again, be prior to us becoming born again, we are actually a spirit man that is dead. The Bible says we are dead in our sins and our trespasses. So our sins caused our spirit man to actually not be in connection with God. It was still unholy. It was still without God. But the moment we accepted Christ into our life and asked him to forgive us of our sin, our spirit man was actually made alive. That's what Jesus said to Nicodemus. He said, you must be born of the spirit. And so we were born again. We were saved. And so God continues to operate in the spirit of a man. And so... Um, when we are praying without ceasing, we are learning to pray from our spirit man, to be in connection with the Father, to be in connection with the Lord, be in connection basically with the Godhead. Jesus is, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 7, it says that Jesus is our high priest. He is, Jesus is everything to us anyhow, but in that passage of scripture, he talks about him being our high priest. And he is constantly making intercession on our behalf. He is praying for us. Think about that for a minute. He is constantly praying for us. Right now, at this time, he is praying for you. We're not praying to him. See, in the New Testament, we don't pray to God. We don't cry out to God. We are actually praying with God. That's the difference in the New Testament. Is that we are actually praying with Him. So I'm not, I'm not praying to God. I'm not saying, God, you know, 
hear my cry, hear my prayer. I'm just saying, God, Jesus, what, what, are you, what are you doing about this right now? What are you thinking about this right now? What do you want to do in this situation? I know you are with me because you live in me. I know you are for me because you've always been for me. I know that you are good and you are always good. But what are you saying about this? What are you saying about this? What are you praying about this? And so the, the Bible also says that in Romans 8, 26, that the Spirit himself makes intercession on our behalf with groanings that cannot be uttered. And so this is interesting because also the Holy Spirit is praying for us. Not only is Jesus, but the Holy Spirit. And I, I, I come, somehow I, I just really know and I believe <laughs> that they are also in agreement. They're in complete agreement in their praying for us. They're not disputing what they should be saying or praying for us about. And so when, when I'm, as I'm learning to pray without ceasing, what I, what I do, and, and sometimes when I have the time and when I really make the time, because sometimes you just got to make the time. I get a, alone with God and I, I get into a room or into a place where I can just pray and just talk with Him. And, and these are the added moments. This is when I really can turn the tap on. Not just the steady, steady stream that's in my life, but I'm turning the tap on in my prayer life. Um, and that's when I do that, sometimes I don't say anything at all. I'm not asking God for this. I'm not telling him I would like you to do this for me. Or mm -hmm. I'm actually stopping and I'm listening and trying to hear what he is saying. Most of us Christians, you know, when something tragic happens, we get a phone call. I get phone calls quite often and, and people call me up. And, oh, my, my, my sister's got cancer. Can you pray for us? Yeah, yeah, I'll pray for you. So immediately we go into this prayer mode and uh, we, we, we just start to pray. Um, you know, and, and that's good. It's not wrong. It's not a bad thing. But for me now, I, I try to just kind of wait. And I say, God, what are, you, what are you saying about this? How can I pray in unison with you? How can I pray for this situation and what are you seeing in this? And try to get his perspective. So I get a notepad. I got a pen. And sometimes I just sit there in silence. And I let his, his voice speak to me. Not just his word. Not just the word of God. Sometimes I use the word. But a lot of times I just hear, try to hear his voice. Try to hear what he has to say. And I start to write things down that he is saying to me. And it's, it's a great way of learning how to pray without ceasing in your life. Is just knowing that he's praying for me and he's praying with me. Amen. And I'm praying with him. Same as with the Holy Spirit. We are praying in unison. We are praying together. And um, whether you believe that we can break all the Trinity up like that or not, and that's... If that's not your doctrine, that's okay. That's fine. It's mine. So, and I'm the one speaking today. So, there you go. So, um, God bless you. Let's pray without ceasing during this time. Let's just stay in that communication so where we can actually hear his voice, hear what he is saying, and then pray accordingly in agreement with them. Because the Father has a plan in all of this. He didn't do it. He didn't cause it. But he has a plan. He has a way of actually changing this whole thing around and making it good for the kingdom of God. Amen. God bless you.